Charles has been an extraordinary member of society. This documentary is about his life and his accomplishments, which are many. One might only know of his legendary leadership, but Charles was more than that. A brilliant academic, an unorthodox inventor, and a courageous traveler. But first and foremost, Charles was simply a cabbage. Growing up with Charles was a delight. He was so much fun. It seemed like he was a natural leader, someone gifted with so much energy that he could do anything he wanted. He was one of a kind. I could always rely on him and together we would feel like we could conquer the world. Charles attended the elite college for venerable vegetables and graduated magna cum laude from his class. It is there where he had his first romantic encounter with a woman that could only be described as magnificently sweet. I loved Charles. He was quite frankly the love of my life. The first time he met me, he gave me a blueberry which I thought was rather funny of him. He was charming and elegant, a true gentleman, and had it not been for his desire for adventure, we would have spent the whole life together. What Suzanne is referring to is Charles' great voyage at age of 23. He said he wanted to sail all the seas and see every single country in the world. We were all sad when he left, but we wished him all the best. During his college times, Charles became friends with Owen, a college dropout who decided to live a simple life as a fisherman. I was always an adventurer, someone who others would treat as an outcast, but would secretly be jealous of. Charles joined me. It was during that time that Charles, for the first time in his life, would experience what a vegetable's fate was like. Once we arrived in Colombia, we received sad news from New Hampshire. Charles' mother was chopped into pieces. He took the news very seriously. His loss affected our travels and changed him. It took him a year to get back on his feet. During that year, Charles met Peter, who by his friends was described as a nobody, someone with no prospects for life. Yeah, we didn't do too much, really. He was this dude that stayed at my apartment, seemed really sorrow, and like, yeah, we didn't really do too much. He needed a place to crush. I had it. We played some video games, and the whole thing took, I don't know, a year or so? All that Charles needed was family support, though. I needed him to understand that his mother's death affected all of us. For heaven's sakes, at the end of the day, that's all we are. Vegetables. Charles began a healing journey and five months later went back to America. Determined and experienced, he began a new career. Charles was elected as a member of the Senate and quickly rose through the ranks to become a prominent American politician. His nutrition and health policies created together with Secretary Lemon became the most treasured gift to the future of any society, its children. Charles had his fair share of enemies. Simon Starr, the spying Chile, and George, the grumpy ginger, were political enemies that tried to eliminate Charles through scandalous photos of him and Suzanne from years back. I hated them for that. It was below the belt and it was something I truly despised. Charles was able to shake it off quickly, but was quoted as saying, this is it. I didn't come here to do this. He understood his career in politics was coming to an end. Although his political days were over, Charles remained an active member of the society for the remainder of his days. He was a radical proponent of abolishing the microwave for its negative effects on vegetable nutrition. Thank you, Charles. You're the best veggie ever. We wouldn't grow so old if it wasn't for his recipes. He saved and better our lives. Thank you so much, Charles. In his final days, Charles remained content about the future. He knew what was coming and accepted it. He grew truly remarkable, and when the master of his life came to pick him up, he behaved with greatness. Mm -hmm.